Hello, this is Vic and Verdoni, and we have six lovely Chiantis here, uh, some from the classical region, some from Rufina, one from Coley Sinesi, and we're going to do a, kind of a fireside chat, kind of Jimmy Carter-ish, and we're going to sit and we're going to talk to you about these uh, six Chiantis, and you know, Chiantis come a long way, and people often, um, they often assume that Chiantis are like those of the old. The pizza parlor Chianti with the red tablecloth, your mom and dad brought you there, you brought the bottle with the straw around it, you brought it home, you melted the candle in it, and then your older brother or sister took it for their room uh, because it was very hippie-ish and they thought it was cool. Um, but they've, they've really evolved a lot, Chianti, and I think there's a lot of great changes that took place over the last 30 years that have made it a forerunner runner in the international wine. And for me, there's some great, great, great values in Chianti, and uh, we're going to taste a few today. Let's do it. Now, uh, Tom, you're, you, you're a professor, you taught Latin and Greek, and people get, I, I know you're not a ge uh, geography teacher, but people get crazy with Chianti. They think Chianti is a grape. What is Chianti? Chianti, Chianti uh, is a league of uh, different towns that got together. It's geographic location. But it, it was a league, a defense league, you know, because the people were always fighting against each other in the area. Right. So that, that's how Chianti came about. It's geographic. And the main Chianti. grape of Chianti? San Giovese. San Giovese. San Giovese. San, and I think people are confused. I think Chianti is a wine. It's a geographic area. The main grape is San Giovese. Now we're moving on to Lavacchio. Chianti Rufina, so it's from a different zone in Chianti, that geographic area, that big geographic area, it's separated into nine subzones, and one of those subzones is Rufina, Rufina. which is probably the second most important besides Classico. From, from a standpoint of prestige, Rufina is the only one that can rival Classico. The problem with Rufina, Burton Anderson, a great writer about Italian wine, said good things come in small packages. There's only about 40 producers in and the Lavacchio happens to be an organic producer. I believe they're the only organic producer in uh, Chianti Rufino. And Rufino, like the town of Gaiole in Chianti Classico, is high altitude. So you get good acidity, the wines will age very well. And this is mostly Sangiovese, about 90%, with a little bit of local grapes, Chiliagiolo and Canaiolo which soften the lordly Sandra Bates. A little bit more traditional, and, and that yeah. same 12 months in oak aging that's pretty traditional on the better Chianti yeah. uh, classical and And the this world. is partially barrel fermented. Most of it is fermented in stainless steel, but this is partially barrel fermented. And you taste that, the oak tannins in the, the back of your mouth. Yes. This is a, a, a bigger, kind of more established Chianti. I mean, for me, what's the price on the Lavacchio? It would be a little under $20 in a store. I mean, for me, this is 92, 93 pointer. Yeah, I would, I would go along with that. And uh, I think uh, that Rufina is really, sh so far, you know, for quality and value, uh, I think this is uh, a real winner, the Rufina. I could drink it today or I could put it away. Yeah, I think you can put it away. It's fine. It's well made, organic grapes. The next uh, one, what do we have? This, this is a wine uh, which is an overproduction of Fattoria Lavacchio. It's called Butero. Butero in Italian is a cowboy. And it might sound odd to you, but there are actually Tuscan cowboys. John Wayne, right? That's, that's right. John Wayne John, tried all his films in Tuscany, that's, right? That's all the spaghetti westerns. But there are really only one or two herds left of steer that the cowboys in the Maremma, they're, they're in the zone close to the sea and they manage the herds, and they lead a natural life. And the whole concept of, of Butero was to have a natural kind of Chianti Rufina. And it's an overproduction from Look the Look at that label, it's got the cowboy on it. It's got a cowboy on that, with this big lasso. Uh, there are really cowboys in Tuscany, as there are in Spain, as there are in the Basque region, etc. And this is 06, it's real bright. 06, 06, ready to drink, 100% Sangiovese six to eight months in large Slavonian oak casks, and uh, very inexpensive. It would be about $12 in the store. So that's a grand slam. I think it's a, a, a home run. Yeah. I guess we should say it's a goal, but we can't say it's a home run. I mean, it's, so, it's a goal. It's so. soccer. OK, the last one we, 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 uh, we're going to taste is a Chianti Classico Reserva. 
and it is a 2008, and normally we would go in order, but like uh, Tony said, it's a Reserva, so it spends a lot, a lot more time in oak, 24 months in oak, and then um, another 12 months in bottle. So there's like uh, three years aging. This is just released. Just released. Uh, Chianti Classico Reserva. So in Italy, like unlike most places in the world, Reserva means something. Yes. If it says Reserva on the label, there's additional aging requirements or production requirements that go along with the term Reserva. In California, you can put Family Reserve or Reserva on anything, and they do that, and people, it's very confusing because there's no standard set with the word. Here, there's definitely a standard right. in Italy. Right. This is very nice. This is from Castel Nuovo Berardenga, which is the most subtly easterly part of Chianti Classico. It's the area which is the warmest, and the wines have a tendency to age extremely well. This was just released. I think it'll benefit from additional aging, but I think you can enjoy it now. Yeah. And what do you enjoy it with, by the way? We should talk about that. You know, the Tuscans, they, they call them mangia fagioli, which means bean eaters, because they eat a lot of beans. But it's also one of the best places in Italy to get a grilled steak, the famous steak of Fiorentina. And Chianti wine goes great with the steak. You know, so steaks, chops, uh, vegetables, natural cuisine, that's what they have. Uh, uh, pasta with maybe a boar ragu. Or a duck, duck, duck ragu. ragu. You know, very traditional dishes. Good wine. Now, to me, I, I get the the, uh, the cherries that are so traditional in San Giovese, but I, you know, you really feel the oak and the power of this wine. Yeah. And this, you know, people don't understand it. 1971, the Antonori's released Tiginello, and Tiginello is 80% San Giovese and 20% Cabernet Sauvignon, aged in small barrique barrels, and it's in the Chianti Classico zone where they grow it. And the reason they call it Tiginello and not Chianti Classico is in '71. The DOC, the rules required that uh, you couldn't age in small and barrique barrels and you couldn't use Cabernet Sauvignon in the formulation. So they came out with a Super Tuscan called Tignanello, charged a higher price, and they're not going, they're not reverting because they get a premium price for Tignanello, much more expensive than you would a Chianti Classico or a Chianti Classico Reserva. I think that's why Chianti Classico and Chianti Classico Reserva are for buys because it's easier to sell a Super Tuscan at a higher price. Right. So they have to market the Chianti Classico Reserves and Chianti Classicos at lower prices. And I think if you find the right one, I mean, this is a great it's one. Great. If you find a good Chianti Classico or a Reserva, they rival like a Tiginello or a Super Tuscan at a fraction of the price. Absolutely. And so th this wine would be about $35 retail in a liquor store. Uh, but for $35 compared to a $100 Tiginello or a $200 Sussicaia, you're drinking a wine that is complex, full body, has all those char characteristics of age worthy uh, wines, and it's still very true to the terroir. I agree. You said it all, Signorello. So I hope you like our little piece on Chianti, but what uh, Tony and I would both like to say is there's tremendous value in Chianti. If you know what you're buying, you do a little research on Google, online, you find the right, right wines from a great producer, you go to the liquor store, buy the right vintage, and you're going to be a very happy camper and your wallet's going to be equally as happy. Yeah, and if you find 06s, 07s, or 08s, they're all going to be very good drinking. You don't have to worry about them deteriorating and being too old and oxidated because the, they hold up very well. Okay, thanks for thanks for watching us today. It's Vic and Verdoni. A little tasty Chianti for you, and it's not just your pizza parlor wine on that red and white check tablecloth. This is these are wines that are dense, beautiful, garnet co uh, garnet colored. They're age worthy, and uh, do a little research. Choose one of the ones we told you today, or pick your own. Try it. Email us. Hit our blog, Facebook. Come see us. Come talk to us. We want to hear it, right, Tom? Do. La Forza. La Forza.